Shalom, Ahab, Wa, Barak. In other words, peace, love, and blessings. Also, first and foremost, Call Halala Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Wapakadash. Today, I'm going to go into um, uh, a class called, uh, we're, we're going to rebuke the wicked shepherd and we're going to preach salvation for Israel. Two for one. Let's go ahead and get started. Ezekiel, KJV, Blue Letter Lexicon, Chapter 44. Alright. We're going to start from the top. We're just going to read uh, probably like through verse 28. Shalom, my friend. Shalom. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Baha Shim Yahweh Shai, unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? And ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. Let's get a precept on that immediately. So it's saying that they, uh, they're going to take from you to make themselves fat. But not, they're not actually teaching you the truth of what these scriptures really say. They teach you a feel-good message. That way you can take all, they can take all your money pretty much what it is. They're hirelings. They work for money. So, let's get a uh, precept on that. Let's go to the book of Micah. And chapter 3. We'll start at verse 9. Hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob and the princes of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. So equity, what it means is all righteousness, all uprightness, all correctness. Um, oh, let me keep going. Sorry, crazy pit bull. So kind of threw my um, threw off my uh, my my concentration a little bit. But let me read it again. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon Yahweh and say, Is not Yahweh among us? None evil can come up upon us. They teach for money. The Bible even tells you that these people are liars. That they're just out here for your cash. That's all they want. That's why they are that, that, That's why they always fail. That's why all the churches are going to fail. Because they're liars. Let's go back over to the uh, book of Ezekiel 34. Uh, starting back where we left off at verse 4. Shalom, shalom. The diseased have not yet... The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye killed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost. Matthew 18 and 11, Yahweh said, I've come for that which is lost. Who's lost? The Israelites are the ones who are lost because they, they, they have... Um, they, they've had their culture and their heritage taken away from them. 99% of the Israelites don't even know who they are. But let me keep going. Um, like I said, again, that which was driven away. So 
so you didn't bring them back. So in other words, the people that were taken away from the truth, you never tried to bring them back to the truth. The people that, that, that were everything, everything that has to do with this 100% truth and following the instructions and being a part of our own culture and heritage, you taught against that. And, and let's keep going. Neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have you ruled over them. Have you ruled them? So, I mean, that, 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 that's self-explanatory, right? That's self-explanatory. In fact, let me just keep going. And they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered throughout all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. And, and that goes all the way back to why would we be in this position in the first place? So on, so on. So why would we be stuck in this position in the first place? I think that's... Um, That's, I want to say, I want to go back into Deuteronomy, but I'm not going to. Deuteronomy, I think it's uh, 28 and 54, that we're going to be scattered to all the four corners of the earth. But the thing is, is that um, the reason why we are scattered is because we have no direction. We had no one teaching us right from wrong. That's what I mean by direction. This, this book is our direction, and if no one teaches us correctly the doctrine then we're, we're, we're not going in the right direction so what do we do the other nations can come in and scatter us because there was no shepherd and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered and my sheep wandered through all mountains upon the, every high hill yea my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them Let's see. Um, I think I have a precept for that. Ezekiel 7 and 16. But they that escape of them shall I'm sorry but they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys all of them mourning every one for his iniquity so you're going to these mountains and the mountains are and the bible are what you are they're represented as nations so when you hear mountains in the scriptures it's talking about other nations you're going to be in these other nations mourning because of your sins, because you were scattered. You don't even know who you are. Let's keep going. Let's go back to Ezekiel and pick up where we left off at verse 7. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. As I live, saith the Lord Yahweh. Surely, because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not the flock. So, they didn't teach the truth. They didn't come in sincerity and honesty. They fed their own bellies. They have slow bellies. They're fat liars. Actually, slow belly means fat and lazy. That too. They, they, they're, they're only about themselves. That's why I keep telling you, they're hirelings. They're, they're worthless. So, let's, let's get another precept. Let's go to the book of Titus. Chapter um, 1. And... Um, 
um, um, um, chapter one. Wait, I want to go back. Let me go back real quick and read it again, and then I'll bring out Titus. As I live and say, the Lord Yahweh, surely, because my flock became a prey and my and, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not the flock. Now I hope that this uh, precept lines up. So. So they fed their own mouths. They didn't be caught, so they didn't teach the truth. They lied to you to get what they wanted. That's why I keep telling you they're hireling. So let me let me um, let me get this in Titus. I feel like it's a little bit um, out, out, out of context, but I'm gonna bring it out anyway. These shepherds, the one I'm talking about, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy Lucre's sake. So they lie to you, and Lucre in the Bible is money. So they're lying to you for their dirty cash. I mean, it's all written. This is why they don't teach the Bible in a church. This is why they'll give you two verses out of context and give you a field good message for some money. Because the real scriptures tell you that they're teaching for money. In fact, let's keep going. Let's go back over into um, 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 Ezekiel 34 before I, 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 I'm about to go all the way. I was about to go all, I mean, I'm not full off, but I'm just like a whole bunch of different precepts hitting me. I'm going to try and stick to the class. Let's go to St. John chapter 10 and um, get another precept. Verse, um, verse 12. And this is what I've been telling you guys. They teach for money, right? But this is John 10 and 12. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd. So what is a shepherd? A prophet. So these are not prophets. These are false prophets. So he that is a hireling and not a shepherd whose own, whose own the sheep are not. See if the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and flee, and the wolf catcheth them and scatter the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and he careth not for the sheep. So it's telling you, he's, he's paid to do certain things. And once he gets you wound up in the system, he moves on to the next person and gets paid. That's why they're called, these shepherds are gonna be stopped. They're gonna be stopped. They're, they're, we're prophesying, we're saying, to say before is what it means to prophesy. To say before, this is getting ready to happen to all you false prophets and all you false Christian pastors out there taking people's money but not teaching the truth. Just taking their money in general. Let's keep going. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Um, go back to 34, pick up where we left off, verse 10. In fact, let's go to verse 9. Therefore, all ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. All ye false prophets, listen up. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. So, he's going to shut down their understanding. They're not even going to be able to save themselves in the end, because they're going to be so lost. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. Isaiah, and you know I got to go to chapter 29 for this one. I'm going to beat these scriptures down your throat until you remember these forever. Isaiah 29, go to verse 10. 
For Yahweh hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And I can keep going, and it's going to say the same thing. The point is, as he's taking away your understanding, he's put into, he already put you to sleep. I'm out here trying to wake you up. All of you uh, false prophets, you're, you're doomed. There ain't no waking up. you got to repent. If you already knew this truth and you were taken out of it, you're doomed. You've got to repent. Um... Let's keep going. Let's go back over to uh, Isaiah chapter 34. And we're going to go ahead and... Uh, oh, you know what? Let me get one more precept on that. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 10. So when I do these classes, I, uh, I like to write down the notes because there will be a point where I'm just sitting there and I'm looking at a piece of paper wanting to do a class and then I start getting hit by all the precepts. So I write everything down that I'm thinking at the time when I'm thinking it, that way um, when I go to teach the class, I still have all the precepts that you put upon me. So, let's go ahead and get this precept. So, this is Zechariah 10 and 3. A prophecy to the shepherds. My anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, hath visited his flocks, the house of Judah, and hath made them his goodly horse in the battle. So his anger is kindled against all these false prophets. So these, these prophecies that haven't been carried out, when they're telling you it's all been done away with and Jesus came back, well, guess what? That's all a lie. The Hawashai did return, and he was crucified, but he's coming back again to save his people. He's here for his people only, and that's why everybody's mad. Let's go ahead and go back over to the book of Ezekiel. In fact, you know what? One more, one more. Ezekiel 13. And this goes right back into where we left off in verse 11. Um, Ezekiel, at 30, Ezekiel 34 and 11. This lines right up with. This is um, Ezekiel 13 and... Where do I want to start? Start at um, let's start at um, verse 13 of uh, uh, Ezekiel 13 and 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord Yahweh, and mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity. There's your shepherds. There's the shepherds that he's speaking out about. And that divine lies. They lie to you for money. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And yea, and ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. So, if you're going to lead the flock astray, there's a very serious consequence just so you can have a life that is literally but a blink of an eye and then eternity hits. So you're going to be rich in this kingdom, which Job 9 and 24 clearly states that the world we live in right now, Job 9 and 24, the world was given to the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof if not him, then who is he? Who is it? If, it, if, if the, who's the wicked? 
think about it. Huh, I wonder who's doing all the wicked stuff to us behind the scenes. I'll tell you one thing you don't see at the UN. You don't see the, you know, <laughs> you don't see an Indian table. You don't see the blacks table and you don't see the Mexicans table. Why? But we're the first ones they want to get uh, a vaccination when everybody's dying from them now. Think about that. Think about that. Let me read one more. Because, indeed, because they have subdued my people, saying peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others dabbled with it with untempered mortar. Lies. You guys build up lies. But we're going to destroy you. Let me, I have to, you know what, I'm going to stop, right? I'm not going to go too far. Well, I have to read, I have to read the next two now because I brought out the untempered mortar. I have to show you guys what it is. <sighs> Say unto them which dubbed it with untempered mortar that it shall fall. False doctrine will never stand. And there shall be an overflowing shower and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when it is fallen, it shall not be said unto you, where is the um, dobbing wherein ye have dobbed Your lies, can you, can, you can build up any type of lies you want, but they're gonna be destroyed because your life will never stand, not against the truth. The truth is, is, it, it is the um, mortar that holds the bricks together. The bricks are the Israelites coming back to Zephaniah 21. Gather yourselves together, O nation that desires. That mortar that we need is the truth. That holds us together. They have no truth. Therefore, everything they've built is going to be destroyed. Let's go back into it. So I'm going away from what I was talking about. Ezekiel. We're going back to Ezekiel chapter 34. Picking up where we left off. Uh, verse 11 again. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. So the Most High is going to search for his sheep and he's going to seek them out. All the individual children of Israel that have been scattered to the four corners of the earth. As a sheep seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among the sheep that are scattered. So I, so so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in a cloudy, in the cloudy and the dark day. So we've been scattered to the four corners of the earth and the Most High is gonna come and pull us out of those four corners of the earth and bring us back into our, um, our, our, our rulership. He's gonna wake us up. He's gonna put his laws back in our mind. So, let me, um, let me read one more and I'll get a precept. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel and by the rivers and in all of the inhabited places of the country. Zadah. So the Most High is going to come and get us and what is he going to do? He's going to bring them to their own land. So for the Christians, you guys are going to some place up in the clouds. But for the Israelites, it says in the scriptures that when everything has been set back in order, the Israelites are going into their own land. Land. Not clouds. There's only one time where anybody's going up into the clouds, and that's talking about the Israelites too. We'll get that, but not yet. Right now, let's, let's get a precept on, on the Israelites being searched out by Yahweh Mahashim El Shai. And 
being um, brought back into their place. And you don't know, most people should already be. Now, if you study it all, you should know where I'm going, especially when I say the name of the chapter, the book, Isaiah. Now you should know. If you said chapter 14, 1 and 2, you're right. Isaiah, chapter 14, starting from the top. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So the people that didn't know that they were Israelites that looked like the other nations are going to find out that they're really Israelites also and they're going to come back to the truth also. So just because you don't have the traditional Israelite um, um, uh, physical characteristics, that doesn't mean you're not an Israelite. The, the, how to prove somebody is an Israelite is whether they understand this book or not, whether they can receive the truth. That's where the Israelites dwell, not in a, 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 a physical characteristic or a skin color. That's, that's made up. That was made up in the 1800s, right at the end of slavery. Think about that. So, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them and shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Shalom, Akiyam, Shalom. And the people shall take them and bring them to their places, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captive, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Why didn't they teach us that in the church? Right? We're, we're out here on the bottom. But in, in the church, they didn't teach us that. They didn't tell us that the people that are oppressing us are going to be our slaves. But it says it right here. Let's go back to Ezekiel. 34. Ezekiel 34 and uh, go to verse 16. That's where we left off. No, no, no. Shalom, my father. Shalom. I'm going to go back to 14. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. So what is a fold? The fold is a goodly place, a nice dwelling, a, a beautiful paradise pretty much. So I will put them in their goodly place, their nice setting, in their paradise, okay? There shall they lie in a good fold place. So you understand it's let me, let me just get it. Let's, let's, let's pull it out. Let's go to the Strong's. The word fold is nave, nave, abode, habitation. How about this? Um, home, a lovely home. A pleasant place. So, a pleasant place, a very lovely home, your own paradise. So, let me read it again. I will feed them in a good pasture, and unto the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold. In in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And what it means to, to lie down, it means to be at rest, at peace, real peace, where you're not in fear looking left and right, wondering if the cops are going to come and shoot you for no reason, just because your skin is brown. Try waking up that way every day of your life. Try waking up like that and then wonder why are these guys the way they are? We never know what's going to happen next. You never know. There might just be that day where that cop's not feeling right. And you know what he gets? 
and gets a $30,000 post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, bonus and paid time off. And what do I get? I get a dirty box to live in for the rest of eternity at six feet under. Let's keep going. Let's stick with the truth. Let's stick with the truth here. Ezekiel. Let me read it again because I'm about to get some more precepts on this. Because, um, 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 um I wanted to, um, I wanted to bring one thing out and I'm trying to, I'm trying to find it. There it is. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's get it. So let me read verse 16 also. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. And I will build up that which was broken. And I will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. And I will feed them with judgment. And you already know who the fat and the strong is. Those, those, those. So... The ones that have been taken away from this truth. There are sincere people out here that don't even know about this truth. But when they hear it, they're going to wake up. And the Most High is going to put them. Um, he's going to cause them to lie down. He's going to cause them to be at peace and at rest. But what I want to do is. Um, 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 I will seek that which was lost. I will bring again that which was driven away. And, um, so I want to I want to get this. Uh, let me get these two precepts real quick. This, this is uh, Ezekiel twenty-eight and twenty-five. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, when I have when I when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and shall be sanctified. Let's find out what that means. What does sanctified mean? Uh, to be set apart, to be hollowed, to be holy. So when the people are sanctified, he's set them apart. He's hollowed them. He's made them into a holy people. So, um... and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. Then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. How are we going to be sanctified in the sight of the heathen? This is a physical thing that's going to happen that has not happened yet. Revelation chapter 11 verse 12 and it reads, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Now let's go back. Um, and read it again. I will seek that which is lost, and bring again that which was driven away. I will bind up that which is broken. I will strengthen that which was sick. I will but I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them with judgment. And as for you, my flock, saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle and between ram and ram. And, and oh wait, cow and cow and, wait, I'm, I'm going too far. There. With them, I will feed them with judgment. So, oh. I, 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 this precept went in the wrong spot, sorry. So let me get a single 28, 25. Got, got a little excited there, people. So, thus saith the Lord God, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the people among which they were scattered and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. That's what I was like. That was where my point was. So how are we going to be sanctified in the sight of the heathen? That's when you go back over to Revelation 11 and 12 and we're going to be, we're going to ascend up into heaven and our enemies are going to be well. That's is the heathen. So, um, 
let me go ahead and finish this out. And they shall dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. And they shall dwell safely therein and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence. So like I said, the Christians think they're going into the clouds. I showed you we're going to go into the church for a time while he destroys this place. But it clearly says, and they shall dwell safely therein and shall build houses and plant vineyards. You have to do that on the ground. You don't do that in clouds. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence and have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. And they shall know that I am Yahweh. Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, their Abba. So, going back to it now. So, so when, so, now we, um, I want to, I want to go back over to uh, Ezekiel 34. So, looking for where I left. There it is. So, uh, and this goes all the way back to, um, well, it goes all the way back to 13, when he says, I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries, and I'll bring them to their own land. And then when you jump back down to 16, I will seek that which was lost. So he came, he found us, he put the right mindset on us. He put us in our own land. Now we're dwelling safely. And I wanna, um, I'm gonna read from um, 17 to 22 in the, um, the Living Bible because it's easier to understand. So let me get that. Ezekiel chapter 17, the Living Bible. Ezekiel chapter 34, the Living Bible. So, we're going to go 17 and we'll read through 22, okay? And, and um, I'll read it in the I can, I'll read it in the KJV next, but I, this this will give you a better understanding. And as for you, O my flock, my people, the Lord Yahweh says, I will judge you and separate good from bad, sheep from goat. So cattle from cattle, sheep from goat. He's going to separate the good from the evil, but we and the tear. The, the remember he's going to um, the fisherman pulls in the dragnet and he throws out all the bad fish and he keeps the good ones. That's all through the Bible. It all works together. So it is a small thing to you, O evil shepherds, to you not only keep the best of the pastures for yourselves, but trample down the rest. That you take the best water for yourselves and mighty the rest with your feet. All that's left for my flock is what you've trampled down. All they that have to drink is water that you foul. So um, it's saying that, that they're withholding all of the good things from the Israelites, but they're having them for themselves. And then they're giving us just what's ever left over. Just it's kind of like how Cain, when he gave his offering to um, Yahweh, not only did he not bring a meat offering, but he didn't even bring the best of his fruits and vegetables. He just brought. He was, in fact, he was in the mindset of, I can't be wasting up all of my best stuff that I worked so hard for. So it's the same thing. They're they're taking everything of the best of the best for themselves, and then they're leaving the scraps for the rest of the flock. So they're taking 99% of the good stuff and leaving 1% for the 99%. So, let me keep going. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh said, I surely judge between these fat shepherds and their scrawny sheep. These shepherds push 
the butt and crowd my sick and hungry flock until they're scattered far away. So I myself will save my flock. No more will they be picked on and destroyed. I will notice which is plump and which is thin and why. So what's, what's, what, what he's saying is not only is he going to take out these false prophets and these false teachers, but he's getting ready to judge between the wicked and the righteous. And this judgment is coming soon. That's why everybody's back in their lot. That's why everybody's back out teaching again. Let me go back to the... Um, um, back to Ezekiel chapter 34. And we're about to... Um, I'm about to close it up. So... All of a sudden, it just got really hot, too, man. I just got hit with a straight heat wave. Weird. But let me go ahead and get this. Um, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Well, I'll read it now. I'll read it right through so you understand what they're talking about a little bit. So this is Ezekiel. I'm going to go back to 17. I read 17 to 22 in this, the Living Bible. So I'm going to read it to you in the, the KJV. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between ram and goats, between good and evil. Seemeth the small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture, and have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet taking all the good water and trampling down what's left as they walk through it for the rest of the people. Whew, man, it just really got hot out here for some reason. Okay. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden down with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Taking all the best for yourself, and you're you're literally giving them nothing. You're giving them nothing. They're 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 having like the scraps that are left over. And, and that goes into the false doctrine too. You're 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 teaching them false doctrine. So if anything, the way a Christian church is a perfect example because they'll give you one or two verses, but they'll be out of context. So the little bit that you get. It was trodden down. So that little bit of knowledge that they did like, throw out at you, they not only took it out of context, but then they told you a feel-good life story to take your mind completely off of it. I'm going to keep going. Therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh, unto them, behold, ye, I, indeed I, will judge between the fat cow and the lean cattle, because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horns till they have scattered them rock you're, 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 um, you pushed aside the people that needed to be put in the troop now they're they're running around with no um, direction and they're being scattered abroad because of that it's easy to, to, to take somebody captive that doesn't know who they are you bet, you tell them anything you want, and they're going to believe you. 21. Because you have thrust aside in the shoulder, and, and the, with the shoulder have pushed the diseased with your arms, tell ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore, I will save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. I will judge between good and evil, the righteous and the wicked. Okay? So, verse 23. I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Indeed, my servant David. Now, this is Ezekiel. Way after King David has 
been gone. So this prophecy has not been fulfilled. I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, and they shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahweh, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it. So, it's going to be Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and then David. <laughs> and I will make with them a covenant of peace and I will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods we'll be at peace in other words we'll be at rest we won't have anything to worry about anymore we don't have to be looking over our shoulders worrying about our oppressors trying to kill us um uh, Three more verses. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the showers to come down in his seasons. There shall be showers of blessings. Why? Because um, he's going to cause the showers to come down in their season. So, once again, we're going to be here. Heaven is earth. But we're living under the rule of the enemy. So the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. We can, we, this isn't our rest. This is a hell for us. But when it's heaven for us, let me read verse 27. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land. And shall know that I am Yahweh when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. So we're going to be fruitful again. We're going to cover the land again. And we are going to be delivered from this bondage. See, you guys don't realize this, but as of right now, we're all prisoners of war. We're prisoners of war. We're trapped here. We're not free. And you've got to give, um, you've got to pay tribute to the king according to the scripture. What is tribute in a modern day term? You have to pay taxes to the government. So yes, we're still under their yoke of iron. And they can do anything they want to us. And, and believe me, being a black person, you know, you could die just trying to defend yourself being in the right, in self-defense. There's a kid right now in jail. Why? Because he was being chased around by two drunk white dudes. No shoes, no shirts, just a pair of shorts on. And these guys harassed him for half an hour, watched the video footage. He was sitting inside of a store, waiting for them to leave. They finally left. And so he started to you know, shake it off. And a few minutes later, they came back. He ran out and he shot him up. It turns out, he said, I was in fear of my life that they were going to shoot me. When the cops searched that car, there was a gun in the console. So the kid was probably right. They went and got a gun and came back. Think about that. Now he defended himself, he was completely innocent, but he uh, he's in prison. Why? Because he's, uh, he's part of, he's an Israelite. He's a so-called black man. The so-called black man has no rights in this country. You don't have the right to defend yourself. Now, if that was two black dudes with no shirts, no shoes, drunk, red running around in just a pair of shorts, chasing after a white guy, and he shot the two black guys, that, that guy would have been considered a hero. He would have been a hero. There would have been no reason to arrest him. But since it's us, you can see that there's a double standard. We're being saved from that. We're being taken away from all that. And, and, and let me get this last verse. And there shall be no more, and, and they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. It's written. Everything I'm saying is written. 
let's get a couple precepts and then we're gonna um, let it go. Jeremiah chapter 30, KJV of course, we're gonna go to verse 10. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed of the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. get another one. These are just the precepts I had at the end of my notes, so let's get them. 1 Corinthians 15 and 15. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to bring this one out. This goes back. I'll, I'll bring it out, but this goes into when we ascend into the cloud and he called us up and we ascended into the cloud and that uh, he was going to um, put his laws in our heart and our mind and that we may um, no longer uh, break his laws. It wouldn't be in our, it wouldn't be in our spirit any longer. So I'm going to go into, um, so what, what I was getting into though is the, um, when he when, when he comes and he's looking for his people and he comes to save us as we're scattered from throughout the four corners of the world of the earth all of this stuff happens at once all of this is coming to a head where everything is going to happen at once so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay off the Corinthians for a day because um I am going to get it. Let's go back to Jeremiah again, 30 and 10. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. So we won't be afraid anymore. We won't have to be worried about being killed, like I said. Let's jump over to um, Jeremiah chapter um, 32 and um, let's go down to 37 I think behold I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath and I will bring them again unto this place and I will cause them to dwell safely and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but, to, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. So now that goes into 1 Corinthians and um, 15. And now when you read um, look First Corinthians, going to go down to first, um, uh, 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 I think it's 50. Um, I guess I could, um, I'm going to start at 53. Because he says he's going to put one heart, one mind in us, right? It says right here in 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible. And 
this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be then shall be put then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sitting? O grave, where is thy victory? So when when, when we get saved, when he puts his quickening spirit back in us, it's going to be more than just us understanding this truth and going back into our own land. A lot of things are going to happen to set everybody's mind right and put people in their place for all eternity. This Exodus, this, this, this um, um, is going to um, be probably one of the greatest things we ever see in earth. When he comes and takes us out of here, a lot of people like myself, you know, we would say most high willing we get to be one of those people. And if we are, I can't wait. I'm trying to get my mind right too. I'm still on this earth. I'm still here, but I'm back in my life. In other words, when you're born, you're sent back in the third or fourth generation to pay a recompense and a curse for your iniquities against Yahweh. So in other words, I'm doing exactly what I was doing before I was deleted the first time. And everybody else out here that whatever they're doing, that's exactly what they were doing before when they were deleted the first time also. So I got one more verse and then I'm gonna shut it down. Um, Amos 9 and 13. Behold, the day has come, saith Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall uh, drop sweat, sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink wine thereof, and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. When he puts us back in our land, you're never taking us out again. So, for all you Christians, that kind of makes it a kind of a stumbling block for you because you guys are all going into the pearly gates of heaven in the clouds. I already showed to them um, in Revelation 11 and 12, that's when the Israelites go into the chariots when the Most High destroys the earth. So, one more verse, and we're out of here. Revelation 22 and 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. So, when you hear what's going on in this book, you have to sincerely receive it and then apply it to your life. That is how you repent. That's how you show your works. That's how you start building a foundation with Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. You can't do that if, if you can do it all you want but if, if you can't do it in sincerity you were never chosen in the first place if you're not an Israelite you might as well just go back to what you were doing honestly because you're not getting in a, a, at all at all at all but with that being said if you got eyes to see and ears to hear I hope you're able to get something out of this message Shalom